those bigger countries or our allies aren't listening is our lack of investment in foreign policy and defense. Canada has continued to step up as a member of NATO, as an international partner, whether with our Indo-Pacific strategy or things like uh, investing in, in vaccine facilities in South Africa or uh, being part of, of significant investments uh, across Eastern Europe uh, in nuclear plants and things like that. Canada is a very engaged international partner and countries around the world continue to look to us as one of those countries that's always going to stand up and defend the rules. That's not what I hear from our allies. They point to us having three days worth of ammunition if a war to break out, to not having tanks that function and those that are overseas in Latvia and the government has not made efforts to replace them. They point to a billion dollars coming in defense cuts. They point to you allegedly, privately saying that we'll never hit 2% of GDP. Okay, well those, those examples are all specifically on defense. What I'm talking about is the large international frame. That's what she asked about defense. What a wiener. <laughs> Welcome back to Canadian Freedom Right on this edition of Irritating Libs Part 2. Basically, we're hitting up Justin T. himself because they're on break and there's not a lot of comments coming out. If I were the Liberal government, I wouldn't be saying a thing right now because anything they say is ripped apart and they just keep looking worse and worse. I apologize, I'm a little under the weather, sinus cold, or uh, maybe it's because I got the vaccine, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, welcome to uh, Irritating Libs this week and it's part two of our favorite liberal of all, <laughs> JT himself. So he said there that he's doing a good job by investing in a vaccine clinic in South Africa, investing in nuclear plants in Europe, which is weird because they're against more nuclear power in Canada, which is... A <laughs> Probably one of the best, cleanest ways uh, of energy uh, around the world. And in Canada, the Can-Do reactor is probably the most efficient, safest way to get nuclear power. Um, and then he goes on and she asks the question um, about if a war to break out, we have three days of ammo. That's how bad our military has become. There's a billion dollar cut coming. You know, when he, when he ran back in 2015, uh, Harper was uh, looking at uh, revitalizing the military. Uh, he was investing in icebreakers, building, uh, getting new s or refurb subs, uh, basically redoing the Navy, uh, investing in new equipment, building our, our, our army. Um, he wanted to buy the F-35 jets to replace the aging f 18 and what did Justin Trudeau um, campaign on? A liberal government will also do what the Harper Conservatives ought to have said years ago. We will not buy the F-35 fighter jet. <laughs> And guess who went through with the purchase, waited years so we could pay way more? You guessed it, our favorite ridiculous, corrupt, authoritarian, virtue signaling uh, lip, JT himself. All right, we were just listening to the Defense Minister, Anita Anand, making an announcement this morning that Canada has acquired 88 new F-35 fighter jets. They will replace the aging F-18s. This investment coming at a cost of $19 billion, the largest military investment made by Canada in 30 years, according to... <laughs> what an idiot. A whole bunch of young people who came out to vote for the very, very first time that we were going to be doing the right kinds of things to secure the promise of this country in a way that people were worried about. And years later, even with everything we've done on the environment, on inclusion, on gender equality, on, on growing the economy, on reconciliation, those young people, eight years later, are having trouble paying their rent, 
worried about their future in ways that are just as tangible, if not more, because of the global context we're in. And I didn't make a promise that I was going to make things better for them. People don't care about your promises because you follow through with zero of your promises. I have three teenage sons and I'm terrified that they will never be able to own a home on their own. Looking at current prices, down payments, the cost of rent, it, it's, it's terrifying. Uh, you failed that base that came out. You know, I think a lot, <laughs> I still think a lot of people came out because they wanted to legalize weed. So great job there, Trudeau. You did that at least. You promised weed. We got weed. We're so much more better off now. Thanks a lot. Great. Necessary. There is, I, I believe, a need for 3.5 million homes by the end of the decade. You've promised 30,000. It's only 1% of the supply. Why so low? On the contrary, we've actually made commitments that are adding up to about to 300,000 new units uh, over the coming decade. These are the kinds of things we need to accelerate and there's no... <laughs> oh, whew. So, on contraire, she said, you're doing 30,000. You said, no, we're doing 300,000 over 10 years which is 30,000 a year for three point something million homes we need. That doesn't include the a million people you bring in every two years if we were to stop right now. That's your plan. I know <laughs> he didn't even get it. That's the funny part. <laughs> 30,000 homes. No, on contraire, we're doing 30,000 over 10 years. Okay, 300,000 homes divided by 10, 30,000 a year. <laughs> uh, if you think he doesn't understand small numbers, go back and look at my video called uh, Trudeau, uh, Trudeau's Disability, <laughs> which he actually says he's dysnumeric. He does not understand numbers. <laughs> he actually says that. Anyways, that's all I can stand for today <laughs> with JT on Irritating Libs this week. Join me next time, and thanks for uh, joining me on Canadian Freedom, right? <clears throat> like, subscribe, share, anything you can to help the little guy out and mess with uh, Trudeau's YouTube partner algorithm. <laughs> Take care.